view. But it's the function, so uh, we're going to start with um, the situation of your clients. I'm talking about Sisi Kuwayutabe and the other nine Anglophone leaders Correct. who have been detained in um, Yaoundé. They have appeared in the military court for quite a number of times now, and until now, what has moved? Has anything changed? Has anything moved an inch? Nothing has moved an inch because we, we have put together a defense, a solid defense of legal minds, both in the Northwest and Southwest, some from Dwala, some from Yaoundé. And uh, we have been following the procedure legally. I want to inform you that up to now, they have not been arraigned before that court because they, don't, they have no reason to be tried in this country because they are refugees and asylum seekers in Nigeria. So we have kept the court at bay up to now. All the court appearances, the judge has been looking for, looking for all loopholes to arrange them. It will not happen in this court as long as we are in that court. Because they, they, how do you leave this country, go and connive with a foreign country, capture refugees that are, uh, that are in, or legally in that country, and bring them here without any due process, and you are trying them in a military court to kill them? Even how though, is that possible? Even though government told us that they were, uh, there was extradition. I don't know what they call extradition. Nigeria does not have a extradition treaty with Cameroon. There was no due process in Nigeria. If, if, you, if you take a good look at the judgment coming from the Federal High Court in Abuja, you will see that these people's fundamental rights were violated. We'll be coming to that. Yes, but I want to tell you that from the day this matter started here in the military tribunal, we have, been, we have a series of uh, 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 objections, liminalities, that is preliminary objections, to race. We have just finished one. And that is on the nationality issue. We will go on to the, 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 the competence, the very competence of this court to try them. And on the nationality issue, the court ruled that they are Cameroonians, that they are going to be tried as Cameroonians. That, is what, that, is, what we, that is what we have gone and appealed for. Even though the court claimed that it was not a ruling, we take it for a ruling. The court, the military court started saying, oh, say a mansion. I don't know what it is, what is mansion in, a, in even in civil law. I've been practicing civil law here for more than 30 years. What is mansion? You receive evidence from both sides. You go and come back and issue a ruling. And you, call, and you say it's not a ruling. It's a mansion. What does that mean? So we take it for a ruling and we have a file and appeal in the, in the, in the, in the, in the appeals court in the center. No, how can we understand the fact that in the course of a case, the judge who is handling that case is transferred to another town, to, to another uh, a court? Notably, I'm talking about the judge of the young the military court who was transferred to, to Boya. the Boya military court. Yes. Let me tell you, if the intent is to frustrate us, they have... They have shot. They have shot. They, they, they have shot the wrong. They, they, have, they, have, they have. They are shooting the wrong way, because we are ready to go as long as it takes. Our clients are ready to go as long as it takes. But that said, I haven't is said it, is that. Is it legally correct? Uh, if you move, if you transfer a judge from one court to the other, when that the judge sitting on the matter and that matter has not been taken to the end, the new judge coming will have to start the novel. That is, we have to start all over. I want to inform you that we are going to start all over, but we are not going to start, listen to me, we are not going to start all over until, until the Court of Appeal has heard that appeal that we filed. We are going to make sure that the Court of Appeal hears that appeal that we filed. There are two issues that we filed. We filed an appeal on that is ruling, and we also filed a recusal to recuse that bench, because that judge that has not been transferred was openly biased. And you know why? What I'll give you just one of the reasons. He's a victim of the Anglophone crisis. His car was burnt in Boya when he was military judge in Boya. So how do you expect a man like that naturally to be fair? So we have 
among other issues, among other things that he has done, like the pre preventing us from filing an appeal and other things that made us to think that he's, he was biased, we have filed a recusal to remove him and his, and his panel from this case. Fortunately for him, in the interim, he has been transferred. But his panel is still there. We will make sure that that panel does not sit again. A new panel must be constituted. And the next hearing is coming up on the 29th of March. On the 29th March. of March. Yeah. But uh, I am suspecting that by 29th of March, we will not have finished the Court of Appeal. So it will be another, another adjournment. All right. And concerning the nationality issue, um, the Nigerian Federal High Court issued a ruling calling on the government of that country calling on President Buhari and his government to bring back Sisiku Ayutabe and the other nine Correct. to Nigeria. Correct. And why, pay them damages. Why is the court asking, uh, requesting that they should be brought back to Nigeria and pay damages? Because they, are, they were legally in Nigeria as refugees and asylum seekers. And they are protected under an international convention that was promulgated in 1951 and ratified by both Nigeria and Cameroon. Cameroon ratified that con international convention to pro the protection of refugees in, in, in 1961. So Cameroon is bound by that, that, that convention to respect the, 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 uh, uh, the, the refugees in Nigeria. Cameroon and Nigeria are bound by that. So when the soldiers in Nigeria connive with soldiers in Cameroon to kidnap those people, I call it kidnapping because there was no due process there was nothing, there was no deportation act, there was nothing. In the Nigeria, which is an English system, the common law system, you must go through the due process of law. That, what does that mean? You must be arrested by a warrant, you must be tried, and a decision taken to deport you, and under that convention, if you are tried for a crime committed in Nigeria, you are, the court must ask you where you want to go, because the law that international convention does not allow you to be sent back to the country from where you are running from. That is, those those Cameroonians, they, 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 they were refugees. Yes, they were refugees. They were in those countries, it's not allowed to send you back to, to your own country. To the your own country where you are running from. They will ask you to choose a third country, to choose another country. But are there some. Uh, 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 that, or, or that, is, it, it, some that is if you are a security threat. If you're not a security threat, you barely go to prison like any other person. Come out and continue to, to, to become a refugee. When the interests of the states involved, like the case we are talking about, Nigeria and Cameroon, uh, concerned, are, are there some uh, conditions that could um, allow the two states, the two governments, to agree on one thing or another? No, the sir. The two governments cannot agree to violate the international convention. There is no such thing like two countries agreeing to violate a national, a, a international convention that was promulgated after World War II to protect refugees and asylum seekers around the world. It's not only Cameroon. It's not only Nigeria. It's all over the world. You cannot agree to violate that, that constitution. If you, read the, if you read the judgment coming from Abuja, it cites that convention, it cites the, the human rights, uh, uh, the, 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 the law on human rights and people's rights of Africa, as promulgated by the African Union, a site a, a fundamental right of, of people living in Nigeria, which is enshrined in the constitution. It's a violation of the Nigerian constitution. It's a violation of international law, a violation of human rights law. Is the Federal Republic of Nigeria under pressure for having violated the, this law? I would suspect that they are under pressure. Look, that judgment has just been issued. It has been certified. No, with regards to the way uh, the government of the Republic of Cameroon has been handling this case, uh, do you think that is uh, that uh, ruling of the Federal High Court of Nigeria is it going to produce any fruits? Is yeah, of course, fruits? of course, of course, it must produce fruits. Let me tell you, the Attorney General of Nigeria of the Federation of Nigeria has been served with that judgment, and he is he has 14 days to decide whether to appeal or to execute. And from my evaluation, the issues in the trial court, that is the, the Federal High Court, were such that there is no grounds for the, for the, for the Federation, for the Attorney General to appeal. But let's go and see what he does. If he does not appeal, all 
all he will do is that they will pay these people their, their, their damages. The 10 leaders will get 5 million naira each. The 47, because it's not only the 10 leaders, eh? it's a total of 57 people. 47 plus 10, that's 57. The 10 who, leaders who, who, who... The 10 leaders and the other people who were taken from Taraba State. They are all in Kondenga State. 5 million naira each and the others... The, 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 other, the other ones, 200,000 naira each. 200,000 naira each. The, the government, is not like here, the government will pay. If it doesn't pay, the lawyer will garnish government accounts and force it to pay. Nigeria will want to ask Cameroon to send back those people that were taken from Nigerian soil, from Abuja, and flown into Cameroon, and they are now being detained in maximum security prison, and they are being tried in the, in the being court martialed in the military court in Cameroon. Nigeria will be asking, asking Cameroon to send them back. And the question diplomatically, is, will, will Cameroon yield to? I don't. I cannot answer that question. What, what, but what, what, what is what will compel? Cameroon to yield to that demand? We, Cameroon, the world has become a global village. If Cameroon wants to step out of the global village, it can do so. But Nigeria has a duty now to clean its image because this matter has dated the image of Nigerian government. Nigeria is one of the countries out of two countries in Africa that are gunning for the permanent member of the Security Council because the Security Council has decided that they will increase the permanent members from five to seven. One from Africa, one from South America. And in Africa, two countries are gunning for it, South Africa and Nigeria. And if Nigeria does not take this opportunity to clean its image, by asking Cameroon to simply comply to the, to, 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 to the, to the, to the Federal High Court ruling that has compelled Nigeria to bring those people back, they will, they will, they will have to have a diplomatic problem. And naturally, Nigeria will call on the United Nations. In international law will uh, take preeminence over whatsoever will be decided. Yes, it will now be international, an international uh, diplomatic problem between Nigeria and Cameroon. We are, we are not yet there. We are waiting to see what the Attorney General will do. But uh, that is what is going to happen. I can assure you that any judgment coming from the Federal High Court in, in Abuja is taken very seriously by the Nigerian government.